Are you seeing a lot more interest from individuals and companies who are very mindful that it is not profitable, it, it doesn't give a good rate of returns, but who would be prepared to so called make a statement by installing such mm -hmm. uh, ecology systems or any other solar mm -hmm. energy systems uh, on their rooftops? Are you seeing such people? Um, very little. We have to face it very clearly. Um, there are a few markets where you have this feed and tariff where it makes sense. There are also a few markets where there's no funding and where grid parity is already reached. And this is, for example, on remote island in Indonesia where you have to bring, let's say, 100 uh, liter of diesel to the genset via a boat which takes half a day. And so the, the cost of these, let's say, liter of diesel is not uh, two uh, zing dollars, it's probably five or even more. So the grid parity there is already, already there. Um, but if we see developed industrialized areas like Singapore, um, at the moment the amount of people who invest this for a political statement is very little. Very yeah. Let's move on to other parts of Asia. Mm -hmm. in, your company was established in 06 or 206, the mm -hmm. headquarters was open here. Yes. And during the two years, you found new markets in Korea, for example. I, you know, I understand that Korea came onto the scene very strongly last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, your, your, your people are very busy in Korea. Um, India is another one, Indonesia, as, as uh, the press statement said today. Uh, can you just give a little bit of uh, insight into the Korean market, India, Indonesia, and so on? Mm -hmm. I mean, pr um, let's, let's divide these two markets a bit in two segments. One is where I say uh, there is a real need of solar electricity. For example, in India. India has around 80 to 100,000 villages without electricity at all. If you want to bring a power line into a small village of 100 farmers, the power line costs a fortune. The, uh, the utilization of the power line is below 10%, so you make only loss. So the only option is solar, to bring electricity to these people and to develop this area. If we take, for example, South Korea, which is, I would say, similar to uh, Singapore, South Korea is also a small country. Let's say 99 depends on the on oil imports. Um, so for them, it was also clear they have to do something um, um, if they really want to get independent of the oil imports of the oil increase. So they developed, for example, this feed-in tariff. Interesting-wise is there is a bit a, a different direction than in Germany or Spain, where um, we see more residential applications. In Korea, you see much more large power plants. The investors are really the banks, are the big chebols uh, um, who really want to invest into large power plants. Um, and with this feed-in tariff, it makes sense for these investors, for private investors, for institutional investors, for banks, um, to earn some money. And this is the reason why it's a, it's a dramatic increase, which is really excellent now. We, um, we have a huge team there. Uh, we Which just city is this in Korea? Sorry? The city. The city in Korea that is adopting the... Uh, um, the, the whole country. So the, the whole country and in Seoul uh, is mainly the government, is the city, but the power plants are a bit on the remote areas, a bit far away from the city. Uh, where they utilize and where they use also land which you normally cannot use anymore. And this is, for example, a bit of swamp area or uh, there are even ideas to... Uh, to have, let's say, floating platforms and to put solar on it, on the water. So, um, so there are a lot of opportunities at the moment in South Korea. Can you name a specific project in Korea mm -hmm. that you have very large exposure? We just finished one part of the, one of the largest pro pro project in the world. This is the largest project in Asia. This is at the moment nearly 20 megawatts. Um, is an area of uh, 80 football fields. It's, it's really huge and large. Uh, and this is a tracking system in the southern part of South Korea, in, in the Xinan area. Um, and we just signed another agreement uh, for an extension of another 4 megawatts. So this is really a, a very interesting project. We are installing it now seven days a week in three shifts to finish it till end of September, because then also the feed-in tariff will change in South Korea. Right. What about um, China? Are you seeing any good prospects in China? Um, China is a bit, I would say, in the middle. You have very well-developed areas and also very remote areas. So it's a mixture b between, let's say, the market which we see in India and which we see in South Korea. Uh, there are a lot of remote areas which are not electrified. There are a lot of initiatives going on from the government. 
but on the other hand, it's also a very closed market. Um, there are a lot of Chinese manufacturers in China, in the local federal state, and it's quite clear that um, they want to increase the utilization um, in the country um, to electrify the villages. This is one project. The large power plants, a lot of discussions at the moment, uh, also in, in wide areas in Mongolia. Um, at the moment, we are waiting a bit, so we are there. Um, we try to support as much as we can our potential clients, um, but we have to see what's going on. I think it's a bit a slow start, but I think it will come sooner or later. Have you got any showcase project in Beijing to time for the Olympics, which starts on Friday? Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of initiatives. Um, there are also a few solar systems there. Um, the main focus was for sure on the architectural design. Uh, we see this uh, very interesting uh, stadiums which are there. Uh, and it's very difficult to put in some solar panels onto the bird nest, so it's quite, quite clear. But a few things are there. Uh, so we delivered uh, a few electrical components and gave te technical know-how uh, for the basketball stadium, which we delivered and installed together with a partner in Beijing, um, which was a combination with solar and uh, with an off-grid system, how we call it, so a battery bank, so to save uh, the energy. Uh, and to make a backup system there. I just received a press release from Linto today about uh, your latest project. Your company won something in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us what that yeah. is about? What is in Southeast Asia, what is quite interesting at the moment, we f focus in these areas a bit more on the industrialized solutions. And these are mainly in technical solutions, for example, for the telecom industry. Um, the telecom industry, they have uh, a need. They, they want to offer at first to their local clients on the villages, on the remote islands, uh, a mobile phone system so that they have a connectivity. Um, they are excellent in this, but they need energy. And when you're in a very small islands where only 200, 300, 400 people are living, then you have to ensure a constant power supply. And as I mentioned before, if you really have to bring uh, every week 100 liter of diesel to the diesel gen set, the operational maintenance, the cost of transport is very high. So here we work together with a local partner um, in Jakarta, um, and we are doing this project with Telcom Cell. Um, that means we secure the energy supply for the relay station, for the repeater station, for the BTS systems, so that the user on these islands or on the remote areas can use a, a mobile phone. And this is a quite interesting market at the moment, uh, and it goes in, in a lot of other directions. Um, India is very strong in this, Malaysia is coming up. So these are a bit how we call it mini grids, yeah? so small grids for island which working independently based on solar. Is this your first project in Southeast Asia that involves a telecom uh, application? No, we did also a, a few other ones already. Um, in Southeast Asia, we did also one uh, last year uh, in Indonesia, and there are a few in the pipelines at the moment now. The first one we did in, uh, in India, um, but this is because in India we started a bit earlier than here. So in India we have been already since three years, um, and the market is also a bit more developed there.